Hello, everybody. This is Elizabeth Clare Brewington with Brightside Global Trade TV, a multi channel magazine. And we're now expanding to being our own channel and podcast and launching our book authors and booksellers series. Um, so I'm happy to have in my studio, and we had actually quite a few stores. Uh, we had a gift store, we had a few stores earlier this morning. Um, and uh, we will try to open doors for your books uh, so that now that COVID is over, you can get your books back on shelves again and you you still do the online thing, but you have a bigger audience now. So Janice uh, Kephart has done a wonderful audio narration of her grandfather's book. Uh, and as I, as I would say, she actually brought the book to life. Um, so it's about a great story about the charities of the Smoky Mountains. And as many of you may know, uh, there's a lot of news about this topic because there's a lot of new filmmakers making a lot of films that you're going to see uh, this holiday season um, and probably at the Oscars. Um, I'm not going to take the thunder away from her book, but she has narrated an audio book and it's also available in an ebook form. And without further ado, Janice, to introduce you. Now, she's a very accomplished woman. Uh, she's uh, uh, worked with high security uh, border control, as well as the 9-11 Commission. Um, and actually, we have Hank, who is an FBI agent, uh, who's also written a book, Janice, and you need to connect with Hank, uh, because both of you can tell us a lot. And we're talking about artificial intelligence. So you all can listen in to Desiree and give us some feedback about how secure are we really? Uh, so she's worked with highly, highly secure and confidential things. And now she's out here promoting her grandfather's story. And I love it. So over to you. Uh, tell us all about it. Oh, thank you so much, Elizabeth. I'm so happy to be here. This is so fun for me. I've done a lot of formats in my past. Um, testified before Congress many times, been on national television, on my national security background. But I've never done a book. Um, that was not in the public way. I, I helped author the 9-11 Commission final report and it's attending monograph 9-11 and terrorist travel. I've written a lot of things, but this is the first time I've come out and done an audio book and actually done a book. So this is super fun for me. Um, I'm a history buff. Uh, it was one of my majors in college. And so this history text, which takes us back to North Carolina, uh, in the early to mid um, 1800s is a history of the Eastern band of the Cherokees. It is the only known written text of the Cherokees. Um, and it is, I think, extremely important to our times to understand the extent that violent racism was truly brought to the Cherokees and the Cherokees did not bring that to um, the Americans that that came uh, to the United States from other countries. So this book is was written by my great grandfather. My great grandfather's name was Horace Kephart. Horace Kephart was is he's quite romanticized in the Smoky Mountain heritage. He was a best selling author in his time. He had graduated from Cornell at 17. He was Yale's librarian. He had a family and children, had a mental breakdown and ended up in the Smoky Mountains. He spent the rest of his life there. He was very revered there as well. Um, he lived in the wilderness for two years on his own. His best friend was, uh, this was the early 1900s, was a Japanese Im immigrant by the name of George Massa. Together they cataloged what the logging companies were doing to the Smoky Mountains, which eventually resulted and he is credited with the founding of the Great Smoky National Park. Um, he's the author of texts uh, about the Smokies that don't exist. What is interesting from my perspective was this Cherokee text was never published during his life lifetime. It was published posthumously by his widowed wife. So it was 68 pages of straight text, a poor introduction and read more like a novel than a history textbook, but it was really meant to be a history textbook. I didn't wanna change the emotion of it because here's this white man from the early 1900s outraged at the treatment of the Cherokees. And that emotive history comes through. And 
that is why I want it so badly to do this as an audiobook. The other side of my life is as a spoken word artist, and I've won a couple of poetry awards and such, and been on the Grammy ballot three times and worked with some amazing people. So I went back to the studio. I took my expository writing skills from my public side, um, my public service side, and my legal side. And then I took my poetic skills and my vocal skills from my spoken word side. And this is the first time I've combined them and then honored my family and more importantly, honored this history. And as Elizabeth so kindly said, really tried to breathe life into the story. It is a story that is super complicated. It has been simplified by the way we talk about things in this country. But the fact of the matter was, it was a very complicated history of what actually happened to the Cherokees and how it turned into the Trail of Tears. Everybody knows about the removal. Most people don't know how removal came to be. And that is what this story does. Um, and because of the emotion of it that my great grandfather has, I really felt like it had to be spoken. Um, and I did a Kindle version as well. And there's a Kephart archive at Western Carolina University. And they were kind enough to help me get images that are not in their um, internet digital library. And because I've been down to the archive and they helped me get some images. That's in the Kindle version of the book. But the version that I did the audio book was where I really wanted to have young people who maybe don't read as much, but listen to a lot of things, really hear the story um, and hear how it was talked about and hear who the main characters were in this story. Chief John Ross, who was the beloved chief of the Cherokees for 50 years, uh, well after the Trail of Tears, who is actually only one eighth Cherokee and seven eighths Scottish, and yet deeply revered by the Cherokees. Um, the Cherokee uh, chief who sacrificed himself so that the Cherokees could retain some small portion of their once huge, they, they covered seven states of, of the current US all around the Smoky Mountains. That was their territory. And they only have a small piece called Kuala Boundary that they have now. And that was granted to them um, during, right during the Trail of Tears timeframe um, because one chief sacrificed himself um, and his older sons to get that land. Um, so it's, it's a very, it's, it was difficult for me in places to do. Some of the stories, some of the stories within the history are um, powerfully violent. Um, and as a mother of three children, et cetera, it was very hard for me to do some of it, but I felt it really important to do. Um, and so that's kind of that's kind of the the emotion and the inspiration for the book. Um, there's quite a bit, and just some nuggets about the Cherokees. I think that most people don't know um, they had thrived in the Smokies for forty thousand years, and actually had had a number of treaties signed with the U.S. government allowing them to keep their land. Now, the U.S. government was always taking a little bit away. But it wasn't until Andrew Jackson came along that they were truly stripped of everything. Um, and I think the, the tension between many people in Congress, um, US Supreme Court Justice um, John Marshall, who issued a ruling against President Jackson for the Cherokees to keep their land, and Jackson pushed that aside and worked with the Georgians to push the Cherokees out. It was a very complicated history. Um, and very sad. So anyway, that is the crux of it. Um, and I hope people will listen, not because of anything to do with me, not even so much because, because of my great grandfather, but because this is a crucial nugget to our American history. I think everybody needs to know. Well, fantastic. And I, I really applaud you for write, uh, doing the audio uh, version and the ebook version. Mm -hmm. And this morning we had a lot of filmmakers and I think this this could be a great film as well uh, in in coming times. So thank you so much, Janice. And the book is available everywhere. And uh, make sure that you get a copy uh, and listen to it. It it makes for great listening. It'll be on our podcast channel, and I'll make sure that 
you will have uh, it available to you so you can listen to it. And I think if you order it on uh, Audible is giving you a limited time where it's for free if you can order it uh, or it's not very expensive. So make sure you get it and make it put it on your playlist, listening list for summer. Thank you so much. Now I have uh, Laura and before I just get to Laura, I want to just say that um, the format is we're getting everyone to do a five to seven minute introduction. So please be short and sweet. But if you do want to talk some more, stay on. And after this race presentation, um, I can do some more with you. And I know Janice and I are doing an interview tomorrow. And Janice is going to be on our show on Monday. So we will have a lot of time uh, and a lot of videos to share. So, so stay tuned. Um, okay, so let's see. There we go. All right, let me record.